Good morning, everyone. Happy Tuesday. Good morning. Hey. Hey, everybody. It's Jennifer. It is um, Tuesday morning. I'm having a hard time uh, getting on board with that. I'm like, oh, gosh, it feels like it should be Monday. Um, and I did not scope yesterday. Good morning, Trisha. Um, and I did not feel guilty about that. <laughs> Let me just say that I know a lot of people say you got to scope every day. I know you missed me, but you know what? Family first all the way. And we had a great day with family and friends. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name's Jennifer Allwood. I own the Magic Brush, which is a decorative painting company in Kansas City. And, um, and there's a reason I'm sitting here on my sofa, by the way. Um, and, uh, so we go into people's houses and we make them gorgeous. We, um, paint kids rooms, we paint furniture, we paint cabinets. I have a great team of women, um, good morning Miss Vicki, who work for me. That is my marvelous assistant Vicki who just got on. Um, what a blessing she is. And we go into people's houses and we make them gorgeous. Now on the flip side of that, yes, this said how to get your hubby's help. Yes, <laughs> I'm going to get to it. Um, I decorate my own house. I run a uh, creative entrepreneur group online. I do coaching for small business owners who are creative entrepreneurs. Um, I travel, I speak, and I'm in the process of writing a book. So that means I've got a lot going on all at once. And this weekend, I sewed these curtains. Um, and by sewed, I mean I hemmed with like a press and seal. Thank you, Joy, for inviting followers. God bless you for that. I appreciate it. Um, and so I started to get the same kind of comments on my Jennifer Allwood business Facebook page that I get a lot. Um, I am the next Hobby Lobby spokesperson. Thank you. <laughs> uh, contacting someone today. So, um, so here's the deal. People always want to know, how do you get so much stuff done? And I have a couple ways, but one of the, one of the things that I keep seeing like a little bit of a trend on my Jennifer Allwood Facebook page is people saying, how do you get your husband, who we call Mr. Magic, um, lovingly, since I own the magic brush. Um, thank you for the liking my Facebook pictures of my house. I appreciate you saying that. It's not all gorgeous. Um, you know, the thing is, we can make our houses and our lives appear any way we want to on social media. Can I get an amen for that? If I was to go ahead and flip this camera around right now, in fact, let's just do that. How about we do that? And then y'all feel normal, okay? Because it may look like it's really beautiful and pretty right now, but I'm going to flip this because I think it's important we remember things aren't always what they appear on social media and in pictures and in books, okay? I mean, I'm, I've got this staged right now so that it looks like my house is put together. How about I just show you that it's not totally put together and I'll hope that I don't drop my phone on the tripod, okay? Crap, sitting on my steps. Let's see what else I can show you here. I knew I was going to drop the phone. Oh, well. Look, crap sitting in there. Crap all over my desk. Crap, 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 crap on the floor. Blah, blah, blah. There, does that make you guys feel better? Does it make you feel better when, um, when all you see is the pretty pictures? It's easy to start thinking, oh, everything's perfect. No, not everything's perfect. I'm going to see if I can get my phone back on this tripod, guys. Give me a second here. So, um, so just remember that when you're looking at other people's lives businesses, houses, trust me, they're putting their best foot, their best face forward because that's human nature. But um, there's always a lot of whatnot behind the scenes. Okay, so back to what is at hand here. So people constantly say, how do you get Mr. Magic to help you on so many projects? Because he does, he helps a lot. If you, um, if you get my emails from the Magic Brush, you can relate with my hair pictures. Thank you. Um, so go to themagicbrushinc.com. Sign up to get my emails. I send project ideas out every week. I try to send encouragement, business ideas. And I have on there all the time, you know, how we're working on this project or that project and Mr. Magic's helping me. And so I get all those emails. How do you get him to help you? And I've got some things that I want to tell you that work for getting my spouse to help me with projects and some things that don't work. Okay, so I'm going to go through these and then I'm going to take your questions and things, but I would love to know if some of these things resonate with you. All right. And let me just say this manipulation of any kind doesn't work. Doesn't work in a marriage, doesn't work uh, in a business. It doesn't work in friendships. So 
hear my heart when I say that this scope is not about manipulating your spouse into helping you with projects. This has to be a heart thing. It has to be a genuine, because people can feel BS a mile away, all right? And your spouse, your BS meter, he, he's, got, he's got that, okay? And so if you're feeding him full of crap, he will feel that. So here's the deal. Here is what works for me in terms of asking my husband, Jason, who is a doll, um, having him help me on projects. Number one, have any of you read the book Love and Respect or done a Bible study or anything like that on the topic of love and respect? A woman's first need, number one need, is to feel loved, which usually means feeling cherished and feeling adored, that sort of thing. A man's number one need, and men, please, I've got men on this scope, so can I get an A for men for this, is respect. They need respect, okay? So when it comes to how do you weave that into house stuff and DIY stuff, well, here's how some ways a man can feel respected. Your husband helps you on a project, you better be praising him, not like in a condescending way, okay? That's not what I'm saying. But if you appreciate your man's help, respect him enough to, to show that. And some of you think that, oh, well, he knows I appreciate him. No, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. How do you know um, in any relationship how somebody feels about you unless, um, you know, they're verbalizing it or, you know, when we're talking about love languages, it's, it's time, it's physical touch, it's words of affirmation, it's gifts. So make sure if your spouse is helping you on projects that there's praise, okay? There's appreciation because they feel respected when that happens. And if, you, if they're not feeling respected, they are certainly not going to be helping you on more projects. In addition to that, ladies, we have to give our men a voice in our house to some degree. Now listen, I believe that decorating a woman's home is something that is a personal representation of who she is. This is me, all the way to the bank. This is me. I've got fluffy stuff everywhere. I've got curtains that I love. Um, I've got pretty things, but I respect my husband enough, and he gives me that, that leeway. You know, I can put in my house colorful curtains, and it's okay for him, but I have to give him respect that he lives here too. So if my husband says, Jen, I hate that, I have to say, okay, we'll find another. And that's a, that's a marriage thing. That's a respect thing. That's a, okay, I adored it, but I respect you enough to say, all right, you live here too. I mean, to some degree, ladies, we have to give them a voice. While I think that decorating a home is such a woman's heart and such a woman's thing, and I want the men to let us do that, I, we also have to give them respect enough that if they don't love something, that we take that into account and consideration, okay? So praise and appreciate your men when they're helping you. It is a tricky line. Um, praise them both privately and publicly, okay? Here's the deal. When you're with a bunch of friends, um, if let's see, if they hate it, they, don't, they won't want to be there. That's true. I mean, our environment really um, it affects how all of us feel. When you are praising and appreciating your husband, it needs to be in private between you and them. And men, this goes both ways. And it also needs to be in public. So when I'm on my Facebook page, I am making Mr. Magic look like a rock star. Is he a rock star? Well, absolutely. I adore him. We've been married for 18 years, together for 20. He's fantastic. He puts up with my BS. And in addition, I put up with his because we've all got it, you guys. We all have our crap, okay? So thank you. I do try to do a great job of praising him in public. I appreciate him. Let me tell you what human nature is. When people praise you, both in private and in public, you want to do more of that because that's how we all feel. Am I right? Thank you. We all feel better when people are telling us that we're rock stars. And yes, my husband and I have similar tastes um, in decor as well. Thank goodness, because if he still liked like mint green and um, 80s things. Hi, I'm periscoping. How are you? Good. That's my neighbor whose <laughs> kitchen cabinets I phone. She lives in the neighborhood. She's walking by outside. Um, oh, that's so funny. Anyway, so when you praise them publicly or you're in a group of friends and you're all out to dinner and you're sharing with your girlfriends, yes, brag on him that my husband did blah, 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 not in a manipulative way, in a for real, baby, thank you. Thank you for helping me paint the kitchen today. 
they will want to do more, okay? So remember to how your spouse feels loved. Remember the five love languages. We talked about these last week. Who can put on here the five love languages? Who can remember? Book by Gary Chapman. If you don't know what love language is, everybody, male or female, feels love most in one of five ways. Are you ready? Okay, words of affirmation. I want you to tell me what your love language is. Your primary. We all have at least two. Uh, let's see. Time. I mean, spending time with them. You go to the movies. You go shopping together. Whatever. Gifts. Does your spouse feel most loved when you share gifts with them? Words of affirmation. That's mine. Amen. When people tell me I'm fantastic, I'm like, hallelujah. And I want to be more fantastic. Um, physical affection. That does not have to mean sex. It doesn't have to mean. Can be. But hugs. Holding hands. That sort of thing. Acts of service. Um, acts of service. I have a couple friends that are total acts of service people. My best friend, Laura, is an acts of service girl. And me and two girlfriends went over and painted um, her master bedroom and bathroom with her this weekend because that's how she feels loved. Acts of service and time. She likes people to spend time with her. So if you have a husband whose um, love language is time and he helps you paint the kitchen, then go do something he wants to do and spend time in his world. It's a give and take. It's totally a give and take. So you can't expect your spouse to help you with your projects if you're not loving them the way they need to feel loved, okay? Acts of service is a big one for so many people. I think acts of service is actually last on my list. Like I would so much rather you send me a card telling me I'm amazing than clean out my truck but my husband um, does like acts of service. And so if I was to go clean out his truck, he would think that's fantastic. Okay, so let me tell you what doesn't work in getting your spouse to do projects with you. And thank you for those of you who are joining late. My name is Jennifer Allwood. I own the Magic Brush in Kansas City. And we're talking today about how to get your spouse to help you on projects around the home. And we are not talking about manipulation. Okay, so here is what doesn't work. Manipulation, like I said, because people can, they can sense BS a mile away and nobody wants to be helping you on a project. Oh, your husband's in Trinidad on business. Oh, bless your heart. You're, you're a good woman for holding down the fort. Here's what doesn't work. Manipulation, nagging. Men are not going to respond to nagging. They just absolutely will not. It's not in their DNA. When we nag, ladies, they do this. I promise you. So when we show them respect, which is the opposite of nagging, then they will be more likely to help us with more projects. So no nagging. In addition, no to-do lists. And I'm going to tell you why. To-do lists feels like something a mom does for her kids. And your husband does not want you to act like his mom. Can I get an amen? Amen. Give me an amen. I'm going to wait for it. I'm going to wait for the amen because it's true. I'm speaking truth. I'm speaking truth, ladies. Thank you for that. Amen. To-do lists don't work. It does not feel respectful to them. It does not feel like we're taking into account what they want to do around the house. It feels like we're telling them this is what needs done. And what they read between the lines is you're sucking as a spouse because all this stuff is still not done. Now, that not be, may not be our heart, ladies, but that's what they hear. And if you, if you read that Love and Respect book, it talks about how they hear with their blue ears and how we hear with our pink ears, girls, and how they speak with their blue lips and we, we speak with our pink lips. So in men, when they're hearing with their men ears, when they're looking at a to-do list, they're seeing failure. You let me down. You haven't done all this stuff. Why is this that done? Our house isn't good. Blah, 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 blah. To-do lists don't work. Don't do that to them. Be their wife, not their mom. Okay, two books, Love and Respect, and the other book is The Five Love Languages by Gary Chapman. Those are two great books. We went through a Bible study on that years ago. Oh, yes, Love and Respect, it's so good. Remind me, if you know Memory Medic, who's the, who's the author on that? If you can think of that for me, that would be great. But, okay, so then we've got some other things here. If you still have a spouse, and men, if that could be, you, we could be talking about your wife. Um, and ladies, if you have a spouse who's still, even when, you know, you try to praise them both publicly and privately, um, you show them lots of respect. You're filling their love language. Even if they still are not into home projects, find somebody else. Quit nagging about it. Not find another spouse. <laughs> Woo, that is not this type of scope. Find a neighbor that will help you. Call your sister. 
Get your kids who are old enough to help around the house. My kids help on a lot of DIY projects. You want to know why? Because you live here. And this is family. This is how we do family. In our house, if you're part of this family, you're going to help me move around furniture. Done. Like, period. It, it is non-negotiable. When you're just up there on Instagram, you precious little tween boys that I have, you can help mom move furniture. So if your spouse is not willing or just maybe doesn't have the energy or if you don't have a spouse or, you know, doesn't have the ability, the capacity, emotional capacity to help you in areas that make you feel loved, find somebody else. Just let it go. I mean, seriously, just let it go. And yes, do not manipulate. Do not nag. To-do list. Yes, exactly. Thank you. Find a neighbor. Find a friend. Find a sister. Ask your kids. But get somebody else to help you on the projects and just get it done, okay? Your hubby hates to paint. You know what? My hubby is not good at painting. I will tell you that. Back when we first got married, so I would say like 17 years ago, we were painting our bedroom blue and um, and we were painting together and him and I were both like backing away from the wall so we could kind of see what we thought of the color and you know, we're looking and stuff and he backed up, backed up, backed up, backed up into a can, full gallon of blue paint that I'd left sitting on the floor. It spilled everywhere. This is before I ever even like had a painting company and ever since then he's hated to paint. Um, thankfully for us, I own a painting company so he doesn't have to. The girls that work for me do. Oh good, Dr. Emerson. Hmm, love and respect. I did not know that. Thank you so much for sharing that. Okay, so... To recap, real quick, for those of you late joiners, um, and thank you for whoever shared this scope. I appreciate that so much. And ladies, if this is something that resonates with you, I would love it if you shared this. Swipe over or swipe up and to share to your Periscope followers um, would be a blessing to me. The things that work when we're trying to get our spouses to help us is praise and appreciation. And that's praise them in public, praise them in private, Okay. Love them in ways that they feel most love. What is their love language? And if you don't know, it is life-changing. Thank you. Oh my gosh, thank you so much for sharing. It is life-changing when you figure out the five love languages of people. This goes for your coworkers. You know, I have had up to, on any given time, eight women working for me in a client's home, okay? Because I have a team of people that work for me. I have an assistant. I have a virtual assistant. Um, I have a cleaning lady. I have people that work for me. When you find out what their love language is, then you can figure out how do they most feel appreciated. Is it when you tell them, you know what, you kick ass. Like, you're amazing at your job. Thank you. Or is it when you buy them a gift card to go to the mall? Or is it when you just hang out with them and spend some time? Um, he wants to hear what you have to say. <laughs> Husband says private especially. I mean, let's just call a spade a spade. Let's just do that, okay? I mean, seriously. Oh, I gained another follower. Thank you. Um, and so if you figure out the love languages, it works for your kids. It works for your coworkers. It works for your mother. It. I figured out a few years ago, my mom's love languages is gifts, okay? When I would be out shopping for me and I would think to myself, oh, my mom would love this. When I would just go ahead and buy it for her, it was like I bought her Taj Mahal. Now, I'm not talking about manipulation, you guys, but that's how she most feels loved. Your spouse has a way he most feels loved. Figure it out and it will open up this whole new world to you of why the heck didn't I figure this out sooner? And it is not too late. It doesn't matter if you've been married 10 minutes, 10 years, or 50 years, Okay, my husband and I had a rough start of our marriage. Let me just tell you. I mean, our options were counseling and church or divorce. That's how bad our first year or two of marriage was. And I'm, I am not afraid to publicly talk about that. And I talk about that on my Magic Brush Facebook page as well. So you've got to do the work. And that means figuring out how your spouse feels loved. When they feel loved, they will more want to help you with the projects that you have around the house. Okay, um, what does not work? Manipulating nagging, and to-do lists. And yes, I have books that help you figure this out. The Five Love Languages is by Gary Chapman. He actually has a, a different love language book for your kids um, because I think they have to be like five before you can start to figure out. And I can give you a few tips. Let me give you a couple tips. Is this interesting for you guys, the Five Love Languages? And I am not an expert, but I totally, yes, it's not hard to get your husband to take a quiz in the book. Yes, they do. They want you to know. That's perfect. My middle child, for instance, I will say to him, Easton, clean up your room. Your room is a pit. 
and he will look around and he goes, what? What's wrong with this? Like he doesn't see it, okay? Easton, your room looks terrible. Like, I don't even know. He's like that, okay? Easton, seriously, I told you to clean your room. Mom, I need your help. And I'm like, what do you mean you need my help? Just pick up what's obviously here, which A, he doesn't see. But when he says things to me like, I need your help, he's an acts of service child. And when I figure that out, I'm like, he feels most loved. Not when I say, Easton, clean up your room. But when I say, baby, can I help you clean up your room? Yes. Then I can help him to see why his room's a pig pen. And then he doesn't feel so overwhelmed. Act of service people feel overwhelmed. Can any of you guys relate to that? How many of you, when you look at your own house and you see all these DIY projects you want to do, but you don't do any of them because you're overwhelmed? Who on this scope does that apply to? And I'll just keep going as long as you want me to. Yes. Okay. More than likely, one of your love languages is acts of service. You just want help. And it's not because you don't know where to start sometimes. It's because you look at it all and you're like, I'm overwhelmed and I would most feel loved if somebody would come in right now and say to me, you know what, we need to start here. Let's start here. And then you can be like, okay, let's start here. And then you just, you know, pick out a paint color and you move your furniture around or whatever. That's an acts of service person. Two of my kids, I have thought for the longest time, are my kids greedy? Like, what's wrong with those two? Two of them, thanks, I'm glad this is blessing you today, memory medic, good deal. Um, two of my kids, if I bring them a pack of gum from the grocery store, they're like, light up. Okay, gum, 69 cents. Is gum 69 cents? Gum. When we go out in public, mom, will you buy me this? Mom, will you buy me this? And, and what's interesting and what my husband and I have talked about is it doesn't matter if, if it's a 69 cent pack of gum or if it's a $69 pair of shoes. They want us to buy them something. Now, yes, there is the kids that are greedy. And, you know, my kids may verge on that at times. But it's because their love language is gifts. So when I buy my son a pack of juicy fruit and he's 13 you guys my oldest son and I have that for him when he gets home from school he knows mom was thinking about him during the day and because his love language is gifts he feels loved now isn't that the weirdest thing on the planet that is not manipulation that's loving the people in your world enough to go you know what I'm gonna study you I'm gonna find out what makes you tick whether it's your spouse your co-workers or your kids I'm going to find out how you most feel loved and I'm going to love you like that because that's what you need, not because that's what's comfortable for me. So ladies, when you figure out what your husband needs to feel most loved, he will most want to love you back. It's also letting them in on your world and letting them know how you most feel loved. And if you are an active service person, when your hubby helps you rearrange the furniture and he helps you put up a pallet wall and he helps you uh, paint the room or he helps you shop for a new sofa, appreciate that, respect that, and then love them where they need to be loved at, okay? Is that helpful for you guys? Can I take any questions on this? And again, I'm not an expert. It's just kind of something I'm passionate about in terms of the five love languages and love and respect. Works every sink in time, not because it's manipulative. It's got to come from a genuine heart place, ladies. But this is how I get Mr. Magic to help me on so many projects. It's not that I'm getting him to do something. It's that he wants to. Um, you have great ideas, but sometimes you can't put it all together. So I'll ask him to help me, but his... Um, oh, that cut off there. Yes, there is a quiz available, I think. But his way is always better. Mm. You know what? Everything goes Arizona. I think that was all one line. He thinks his way is always better. It's tough. That's tough because there has to be that give and take in marriage. And, um, and it may just be that he's needing to feel that respect. And perhaps if you validate his ideas and validate his position as the spiritual head of the home and also just the head of the home in general, um, that if you validate all that and then say, but can we just try it this way? That may very well help. Sometimes, because men aren't so visual as we are, ladies, they can't picture things like we do. 
in terms of decorating and how something is going to work in the house. And did you know that to some degree, most men do have some degree of color blindness? And this is not something sexist against men. That is not that this type of scope. But sometimes they literally just cannot see how we want to rearrange the furniture. They just can't see it. And so if you have their blessing on it, do it while they're not there. Often, and this is what happens so often with my clients, after 15 years of owning the magic brush and being in my clients' houses and um, you know, making things beautiful, so often the men are the most hesitant. They're like, I am just not sure. I'm not sure about magic brush coming in here and painting these cabinets or faux the ceiling or you know, glazing the walls or whatever. They're not sure. When they come home and see it, so often they're like, oh yeah, that's good. And if we can get the husbands on board with what I'm doing in a client's house, the, la the women of the house then can just like, they can, I can do whatever pretty much. I mean, I pretty much have permission. But it's often because the men have to see it. They can't visualize it quite like most of us ladies can. Now that's not every, that's not across the board. But I'm just saying that that's something that I have seen in my 15 years of business. Um, sometimes you're both a business owner. I feel like it's a business project you want. Sometimes they just have to see results. Sometimes you just have to say, baby, when I decided to go online with my business, for instance, so for 13 years, we worked in clients' houses. And, you know, I have this team of women that's worked for me for years and years and years. And, and they're wonderful. And we get to go in some big houses, you guys. I mean, we were, we fowed last year in a house, not in Kansas City. Um, we traveled to do an eight-bedroom, 12-bathroom home um, for somebody that was on the cover of Forbes magazine. Okay, so confidential client. But I'm trying to say, and this was a vacation home, we get to do some amazing, beautiful houses. Um, when I decided to take my business online and do coaching for creative entrepreneurs, and by the way, if you own a creative business and you like this, this is a lot of what my coaching pro program revolves around, but we're talking about business. Just like right now, I'm talking about relationships. Um, when you are in a business, by the way, you're in relationship with people, you're in relationship with clients, coworkers, um, your assistants, you're in relationship with the other people that are on your team, and that all helps to make your business run smoothly. When I said, baby, I want to take this online, he was like this, because for years, um, if he was to come to me and say the same thing, I have to give him that same respect. If he was to come to me and say he wanted to, you know, reinvent how the car worked or something, <laughs> you know, I may be doubtful, but I have to give him that leeway. Okay, let's see what happens here. And thank goodness he did the same thing back. Okay, let's see what happens here. You know, and um, and often I think they need to see results and he needed to see, um, you know, what was happening in my business before he was completely on board. You want it to be fun with him and not all business. Yeah, and since I don't work with my spouse a lot, I'm not really sure um, how to respond to that. Um, a lot of businesses work with the husband and spouse, but I'm probably not the best one uh, to coach anybody on that because I don't work with my husband. So, all right, guys, I actually have to get to work. I have stuff to work on today for my book um, because there's deadlines and I'm way behind on those deadlines. I'm writing a blog post today about having a decor swap party. So if you guys follow the Jennifer Allwood Facebook page, you'll know that uh, last week I hosted a decor swap, basically, me and my girlfriends all got together, brought the decor out of our home that we were tired of, and we did a little swap in action. Um, I do have a book name, yes, but I don't know if I can release that yet. I need to talk to my publisher about that. It's good. <laughs> I'm like super excited about it. I actually had been praying about it and felt like the Lord gave it to me a while back, and I'm like, oh, yes, that's totally the name of my book because it fits who I am and what's the book that is about. So um, we are hoping to make some serious headway on that in the next couple of weeks. If you guys do not already get my emails, go to themagicbrushinc.com. There's a place up at the top. You can put your email address in and you'll get all of my blog posts. Um, thank you for helping marriages. You're welcome. I had no idea I was actually going to scope about this last week. Uh, and I may scope again tonight if you guys are available. I'm doing some DIY project stuff around the house tonight. Um, I'm finishing a palette for fall and then decorating a lantern um, for winter for a giveaway. Not for on Periscope, but 
you might want to see it anyway. All right, bless you guys. Have a great day, okay? We'll talk to you soon. We'll see if I can turn it off. It's always a challenge to turn.